Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this session on Open Education Champions. OE Champions is a chance to talk to important OE advocates and actors, which is why we are talking to you as an OE Champion today. The intent is for students, teachers, pedagogists, and practitioners of open education, like yourself, to discuss the importance of OE and to share experiences with facilitating the creation of more OER to inspire others to do the same, underlying the role of librarians in this process. My name is Kamila Kopetkanikua and I'm a senior librarian at Gdańsk University of Technology. And I'm very pleased to welcome Kamil Śliwowski. Kamil is a well-known educator in Poland. He runs a very popular uh, website uh, dedicated to OER and now is the time for you to get to know Kamil. Thank you very much to talking to us today. <laughs> Thank you for, for the invitation. I'm so happy to uh, be able to present some kind of a history, I think, uh, about open education resources in Poland, because I think I'm as old as OER in Poland <laughs> at this point, and my projects are as Yes, well. that's true. <laughs> it's really <laughs> true. <laughs> So let's start. Uh, I will read uh, these uh, questions for you. Uh, so my first question is, can you tell us a bit about your work uh, with OER or open pedagogy more broadly? How did you come uh, to be involved in open education? Have librarians support you uh, on that open education journey? <laughs> So first thing, I think I, I need to say that I'm a librarian myself. I'm not working currently as a librarian, but I was starting my, uh, my studies uh, and moved from studying law to studying uh, library uh, and science and information science. And at this point, I think at the, just at the first months of, of, my, uh, of my studies, I went to very early, just the beginnings of Polish Creative Commons. I, it, I think it were one of the first meetings of Creative, Creative Commons Poland team. And I just asked them if they need any help, like maybe some volunteers, uh, because I've just read a Lawrence Lessig book, um, Free Culture, and I was kind of like amazed and inspired about the just starting, especially in Poland, just starting open culture movement. And at this point, I didn't know anything about open education. I didn't know the education was even on the horizon of this kind of movement at this point. It was 14 or even more, 15 years ago. And um, after a few years, I became part of the Creative Commons Poland team formally and started working a bit on trainings on copyright. And at this point, I think I discovered open education um, and open education resources because uh, as I kind of was finishing already my studies, I knew that I wanted to be more an educator than a lawyer working with open, uh, open practice and open culture. And at this point, when I was training more and more teachers and librarians, um, I thought, okay, this is, this is my part of the movement I want to join and be, uh, and be uh, more active in. It's, it's open education and open educational practices as well. And uh, yeah, at this point, uh, being a librarian myself, training librarians, uh, working with librarians, researching their needs, I think they, they were like a very, very important part of, the, of, of becoming kind of an activist for open education. Thank you. Um, so next, uh, next question is, who has benefited from open education at your institution as well as beyond your institution? And what would you say uh, have been the key benefits? Mm -hmm. So like from the time perspective, uh, because I was always working for institutions that were kind of like support institutions for other institutions. So we were providing trainings as Creative Commons or other NGOs, trainings for librarians, training for teachers. <clears throat> and I think uh, from this time perspective, being from, uh, being from this uh, kind of like support, uh, uh, support angle, the, the, the best benefit, the biggest benefit educational institutions in Poland had through open education was uh, kind of the shift we managed to lobby that uh, the publishers, especially commercial publishers and librarians, libraries, they kind of understood that the time are changing and they are changing with the internet. So we have to think not only about pushing 
publications online, but when we want to publish more and more online books, textbooks, uh, stuff people can learn from, can read, can develop themselves, we have to think at the same in the same moment when we are trying just to publish things online, digitalize them, we have to think about copyright. And when we are thinking about copyright, we have to think about how this copyright can like serve people, not be a part of a problem of mm -hmm. not getting this this content to people who want it, who need it for their development, for their education. And I think this is kind of the biggest benefit we uh, we manage uh, both for ourselves and for those institutions that we were kind of deeply involved in in uh, in kind of making the shift that. Uh, Digitalization in Poland for many, many years was understood as something that has to be always taken into account with the copyright. It doesn't have to be two separate processes that you think about digitalization of education or, uh, or books or culture. When you're thinking about this, you always have to think about copyright issues and, and openness as well. So I think that's the kind of the, the biggest thing that happened. Yes, that's true. It's really true. Um, okay, another another question. Uh, what do, uh, what do you see as key success in the open education movement so far? I think it's also a copyright <laughs> law <laughs> awareness, uh, but maybe something else. Uh, starting from your own experience. <laughs> It's, so, so I think even smaller success there there were on those uh, on those different journeys and paths of, of open education movement in Poland. Even before we had huge programs with EU or Polish government funding for for openness, uh, we had some great examples of institutions that they were very often afraid. They they wanted to have something do something differently. They wanted to publish online, but they didn't know anything about new ways of doing copyright. They were like stuck in thinking from 90s and earlier uh, times how to publish something online, that they should it has to be something that should be restricted the same way as we restrict the copyright for, for non-digital materials. And I think those first institutions in Poland, so like institutions like uh, Zachenta Gallery, that was the first one among many other countries, uh, similar institutions in other countries who published modern art, co modern art content on Wikipedia, uh, even before Open Glam projects. I think those were kind of like small successes, but they were pushing the boundaries because uh, if such institutions were, were willing to, to experiment and to, uh, to even think about this kind of opportunity, then we knew that maybe even without the copyright reform, we will be able to talk with other institutions and, and then help them um, to, to, to make similar changes in the future. And I think that was kind of like uh, each year had some, some institution in Poland or, uh, or a publisher that, that was willing to, to go digital and open at the same time. I think those, those were the, the most important. And of course, it, I have to mention that the the biggest, for a few years, the biggest uh, open textbooks project were happening in Poland. And I think this also opened doors to other projects that are not only government funded. And right now we see projects for both open education on the um, primary, secondary level. And we also, want, we are one of the only countries outside of US who has open textbooks for higher education. Uh, both in Krakow and in uh, happening like on the university and uh, privately funded by OpenStax. So I think that's also like a great success that we have such projects, especially we are not a very popular language. So it, all, it, like it, it happens only in Polish. Like if we do it in Polish, it's not usable outside of Poland uh, very much, uh, which is very different for languages like French or Spanish or of course English. So I think that's, uh, that's, pretty, that's, that's pretty huge success. Yes, that's true. Uh, when I first time uh, heard about this project OpenStax Poland, uh, yes, I was uh, really surprised because I know, as you said, uh, Polish is a very popular language. So, <laughs> And we know uh, because um, uh, on the website uh, we have some uh, information about uh, how much, how many students use uh, these um, um, handbooks. And yes, they are very popular among Polish students. Yeah, there are new happening. New, <laughs> new subjects will be happening in the next few years. So I'm, I'm really glad that this is happening. In yes, 
so far uh, we have uh, physics and um, psychology. Uh, so, uh, okay, my, my uh, another question is what, is what still needs to be done for open education to truly take hold? Uh, what are still the most pressing challenges? What do you think? So from, from research perspective and my uh, great colleagues from Centrum Cyfrowa who are running those kind of research for uh, at least two years right now, uh, for uh, research about barriers in Poland and in the European Union, barriers for open education to, to grow even more. There are, of course, issues with copyright. And I think it, it's not just an issue with awareness of copyright, as you mentioned, that this is kind of what we did in Poland for many years. We, we tried to raise the awareness about copyright and open education resources. And I think we did that. The issue is that the, uh, the awareness is very often um, getting uh, those teachers, especially teachers and educators, to think that there are more risks there than uh, opportunities for them to, to use open education resources. And I think we have to shift that. That would be a great thing to see in the next few years, how we can make open education resources even easier to use and easier to think that if I'm using them, how can I uh, benefit something from that even more uh, benefit benefit more uh, in comparison to using copyrighted materials from the typical commercial publishing uh, sector. So I think that's that's one of the things that we could grow in. And another one, uh, I would say, um, the open education movement in Poland. Uh, I think it maybe it didn't stop growing, but I think it kind of. Uh, stopped at the wall of how difficult the educational system um, happens to be. So I think a lot of teachers, um, are, even if they're motivated to use and create open education uh, resources, they don't have mm, proper support system because of the lack of the whole support system for teachers and educators, especially in primary and uh, secondary education. I think it's a bit different in, in the higher education, but uh, where the opportunities are right now even better uh, in comparison to K-12 education, I think. Uh, but I think uh, we still lack this kind of support system where, where teachers have technical, legal support, maybe not per school, but maybe per district or per some bigger community. So they, uh, they would feel free that they don't risk anything. They don't have to spend too much time developing their own resources. They can invest their time uh, because this will be benef beneficial for, for them and their colleagues. And I think right now they're kind of like uh, stuck uh, in a lot of different uh, issues with bureaucracy. So developing their own resources and then even thinking about making them open and maybe sharing them and maybe asking other people for feedback, their students, their, their other teachers. I think that's not the first or even second thing they have to deal with. So I think that would be a, a, that would be a great thing to see when we can have this time and resources for teachers for them to have this much higher on their uh, hierarchy of priorities. Yes, <laughs> totally uh, agree with you. Uh, so uh, I think maybe last last uh, question is, uh, what are your plans for the future with open education? Can you tell us? <laughs> so, so my personal, so my personal <laughs> personal plans. Uh, I uh, I think I kind of uh, stopped the development developing my own blog at some point because I, uh, I, I thought that I already solved the problem I started the blog for because I like 10 years ago when I eight, nine years ago when I started the blog about open education resources in Poland, I had this problem when I was training and traveling around Poland that people did not know where to seek those great resources. So I kind of combined them and showed them with Polish language description, uh, some tutorials. Right now, like, Th that's not the issue like it's so easy to find and I think like kind of mission accomplished like I, I have to seek something something else um, I developed uh, parts of online courses as well so I don't have to uh, always just train myself uh, or other teachers can and educators can use this kind of content and I think my plans would be to uh, to combine as much as possible uh, showcasing how open education resources could be used in specific uh, educational ed tech tools. So I think like there's a huge, huge opportunity for, for educators, uh, especially in uh, K-12 education, 
how they can learn how to use those great tools that are very often commercial, but they allow to use and creation of open education resources. So how we can combine these great technologies that great apps with, with resources that are open, that are pretty shareable and with ways that they, those resources could spark some open practices as well. So I think that could happen. And that's kind of like one of the goals I, I have in my mind that I would love to invest more, more of my time. And from a broader perspective, not my own plans, I think uh, uh, because we had this great project of open textbooks and we have projects of open textbooks for higher education. Um, I think like maybe it's a time to like, maybe not have a step back, but kind of like a step in the direction of, uh, of digging more into how those textbooks could be used and maybe developing some uh, like kind of skills sharing hubs for teachers and for educators, how those, those resources, which we have a lot in Poland and we have a lot of them in Polish language, which is very important, it wasn't the case five or 10 years ago, uh, like those kind of skills hubs where teachers and educators can dig more, can learn how they can really, not all of them, maybe, more, maybe just the percent of the most, uh, most active teachers and educators, uh, they can learn how to, even reuse those materials. They can remix the materials because right, right now, most of them are just adjusting them a bit for their own needs. So yeah, they, are, they are not making their different versions, different open versions. So they're not sharing their practices as much as possible. I think that could be a great thing to, uh, to plan more projects uh, in that direction. Uh, how we can like base on those resources, available resources, uh, develop some skills and some groups of most active educators that would be willing to to work on developing them and uh, like showing other teachers how to reuse them in more deep uh, deep uh, way than just right now. Okay, so thank you. Fantastic perspective, really, and <laughs> and plans. So uh, if you if is uh, is there anything else you do you want to add? So maybe. <laughs> But maybe just one comment that I think uh, one of like this, we, we've talked about this a bit, but uh, uh, I'm always interested when I'm talking from, with people from, from other countries from the same, uh, same movement, or at least like people who are interested in education, that uh, it's always very interesting to compare what kind of skills and what topics are teachers and educators interested in beside their subject topics. So like, like in Poland, I think this is something amazing that the copyright issues in open education at some point really was kind of a discussion point in broader discussion about education. I think that's, that's, uh, that's something to, that I think we did not appreciate enough. And I think that's kind of like something we, could, we can work more uh, that we had this opportunity. That's a kind of good starting uh, uh, starting point for for even pushing uh, open education, open practice even further. Okay, thank you, thank you very much uh, for this fantastic um, discussion, uh, and uh, we really look forward to sharing it uh, this great conversation uh, with the OE community. Thank you, Kamil, so much. Thank you. I had a great time. Thank you for those questions. Thank you.